G'day guys, uh, Adam Kogan from SSW TV and we are here at Ignite on the Gold Coast. And I'm here with Charles Sterling. How are you, Charles? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me out here. Yes, good to see you again. Uh, Charles and I have a long history. We launched .NET in 2001, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Wow, and here I am still doing Visual Studio and you've been on a whirlwind tour through different teams in Microsoft. Uh, doing uh, uh, ALM and TFS and right. VisualStudio.com and then uh, now you're working on Power BI. I'm working on Power BI, I'm working on Power Apps and I'm working on Flow. So not just how to look at your data, yep. how to action it and how to automate that data. All right, cool. So I can ask you any questions I want. Across any of the 25 <laughs> years we've been together, Adam. Yes, that's right. All right, fantastic. Well, why did you come take me out to that island and nearly kill me? No, don't worry about that. <laughs> that was the best swim of our entire lives. It was still one of his high points. So. All right. Okay, so Power BI, uh, awesome, awesome tool. Thank you. Clients love it. I think, yep. I think you've done a great job. What is the story with dev test production? Like being able to develop, being able to just deploy those changes to the test server into production. How do you want developers to work? That's a great question, Adam. So what, what you're talking about is you want to go out and have something that's out there, people are using it, and while, while they're using it, you want to actually go ahead and, and work on something and make upgrades, make changes. And right now, it's harder than it needs to be. But we, what we've actually added, if you take a look at the brand new navigation, is a way of going out and actually copying an entire workspace right. over into new workspace. So you can, um, with the new navigation, go out and work on a dev environment, update those data sets, update those uh, schema, update the reports, and then copy it back into production one. So that actually the links and the URLs, that's something else we're adding is actually something you've asked for a long time. <laughs> Deep linking directly, not GUIDs that are specific to you as an identity. That's right. So again, uh, we've heard, heard your requests and we're working on those right now. So if you haven't actually gone in and gone into PowerBI.com and flipped the preview switch, you have to go to settings and there's a preview. That's going to turn on the new navigation and you can actually look at that new experience. Okay, awesome. And um, in terms of source control and management like that, what are you recommending? You know, we're, we're not quite there yet as far as, I, I know what you're going to, why you're asking is that uh, Raj went out and made a change. David goes out and has a collision. You want to look at some differencing engine to go yes. out and say, Raj's was crap, I'm going to pick up David's. I just want to know who's changed what. That's right. And um, we still need to do some work on actually going out and, and supplying the schema so that way those differencing engines can work. So we're not quite there, okay. but it's understood. And okay. it's actually something that, for other reasons as well, a document in the, the format of that PBIX file. Right, okay. Uh, one last question on Power BI. Can we get one more? No, I've got some more, oh, but, okay. All right. <laughs> but just on the Power BI side of things, just with the DevOps experience, um, what, are you, what have you done, what are you doing in terms of being able to get um, information about what's going on in production, like what, which, which reports are being used the most, mm -hmm. which ones are giving people errors, where they get potentially lost, like trying oh, to get... Oh, oh, I see what you're talking about. Hmm. I was actually thinking about looking at your DevOps cycle as far as how is it working, uh, what you're actually asking about is once it's pr gone into production, how are people using what you've actually embedded? Yes. So you're actually all the way into Power BI embedded. Thank yeah. you, by the way. That's pretty cool. Oh, I, right. okay. I didn't know you guys were doing embedding. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but back in August, we actually had the, the content packs or the usage packs in your administrative console. So if you go into your uh, admin settings, you actually can see the usage. How many people are logging in? How many people are accessing each report? Um, now, most people don't have access to that because you have to be your Office 365 admin, or at least when we first released it. Mm -hmm. So then in October, we added a new role called Power BI Administrator that you can delegate. You don't have to be an Office Administrator. So take a look at that content pack. Um, it will give you the information. Now, it's kind of static, so the first thing that you're going to ask when you look at it, if you haven't, is I want to slice it specific to this user, specific to this report, and we don't let, enable you to do that. Um, if you go out and take a look at ideas.powerbi.com, it's got 800 votes, 836 yep. or whatever the case is. It's already in the backlog, and I think we're actually going to do it. This is under NDA, right? No one's going to hear about <laughs> this. Um, I actually think that's going to come out in the next sprint. Actually, we call them semesters on this yes. team. It's going to come out in the next semester, but just between us right. and our viewers. And then also, which I actually find more useful, is if you go into your um, office tenant 
and you go look at your security auditing, you can actually enable the security auditing for Power BI. There are 19 different um, things that you can audit and I can then ex export that with PowerShell right. and create reports on it. So I actually see, was something shared, was something accessed, was something deleted, and I can actually get much more granular control. For things like, um, if I see that everybody's logging in at 9 a.m., I want to have my gateway refresh set up at eight so all they have is brand new fresh data. Right. So I use it for things like what you do in your build, measure, learn exercises you guys do at your yep. fire starter. Yep. Yeah. Fire boot camp, Charles. Fire boot camp. <laughs> Any right. points for getting it close? <laughs> no. Okay. So uh, I want to ask a couple of questions about Power Apps and, and um, Flow. Power Apps? No, power, I'm power. <laughs> <laughs> But before I get to that, yeah. I would, like, I'd love to know what's the difference between um, like the, the way the sausage is made with the TFS team and the Power BI team. You know, you're working for, Char uh, for um, Brian Harry and mm -hmm. other people in that team and they were shipping every uh, you know few weeks uh, on the visualstudio.com and then you work with um, you know James Phillips mm -hmm. in the uh, Power BI team what's the difference what, what was it a big was it like joining a different company or was it um, they're, so they're both shipping there, there fast. Was, I still use terms like sprints that's not mm -hmm. a term that the teams use I had to get used to vernacular like semesters All right. Um, and I also have a desktop client that ships every month. So that was a little bit strange versus the Visual Studio updates that right. ship every quarter. So there was some iterations differencing. Um, now in both cases for the service, we're updating it every week. And that was actually you know, business as usual for me. Um, we also have different rings, our staging, our staging units as Brian would call it. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a DXT tenant where I can go out and see things that are in flight. I can look at my MSIT tenant where they're actually getting hardened, and then I can go out and see them in prod. So I actually track those all the way through. So there's probably more similarities between the BAPI unit that I'm in right now mm -hmm. and DevDiv, because that's actually where we modeled yeah. ourselves as. That's where James Phillips kind of came from in terms of Microsoft. So it's gonna, it's gonna look similar. It's nothing like an office or a Windows environment. Right. Yeah. But what were some of the things that you love, like, oh, this is completely different. I love the way this is done, like from an employee's point of view, joining a, a team that's shipping kind of the same thing, but probably doing some, some things different. Um, the marketing team, as far as uh, decisions for training and uh, the partners are actually in the engineering org. So we, we are much tight, more tightly knit. Um, I like that. Um, so again, organizational boundaries causes some friction that James has gone out and said, you know, I can fix that. That's, that's a James Phillips solution. I can do, boom, the right. works are now together. And it causes us to, again, work tight, more, much more tighter um, as far as a group. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, he's been amazing for me. I love working uh, with James. On the internal list, yeah. I sent a long email with Winges. He just calls me from his phone on his way to work and starts working through it. So the management between me and James, I don't know if they're as fond of this, <laughs> Because they're like, who is he talking to? Where is he getting this stuff? Why is he calling those people? And yeah. I'm like, that's James, man. That's, yeah. that's how he rolls. Yeah, um, amazing. Can you add me to the list? I'm like, are you sure? But yes, I can add you. Are you sure you want to hear a bunch of RDs yeah. talking about, uh, have you talked about what regional directors are? Uh, I think most people, most people kind of know. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, so uh, I want to move on to Power Apps. Okay. Uh, I can tell you, everybody wants to uh, write an app that works on phones, yep. all right? And, and tablets and... Do they want a writer or they just want one? They want them to work. Yeah, they want them to so work. So they want to develop and they want it to work. That's right. Um, I want to understand, Power Apps um, have been uh, positioned, uh, if you ask me, kind of to clobber InfoPath and clobber Access and clobber, well, we had Light Switch. Like, it's kind yeah. of, uh, is this the real deal? What's, uh, just tell me why, why I should invest my my, my no, thinking a, in no, this. No, it's a fair question. I mean, you, had we gone back 15, 20 years ago, you would have said, you know, I used your OLEDB, I used your RDO. You know, is, is this link thing going to stick around? Is that going to have wood behind the arrow? It's a fair question. Uh, we've tried, we made the promises. Um, I, I think there's a couple differences uh, right off the bat. Um, first of all, the glass ceiling that VB3 kind of was built up into and InfoPath was built into was always a first priority. We would never have a glass ceiling. So if you ever want to do something outside of the span of Power Apps, um, 
natively, we're going to be able to let you write Swagger files and call the world. So no ceilings, no cliffs. That was our first mantra right off the bat. Um, and the second one, I think we understand development tools now. Right. There was a lot of learning still back in those yes. days, even with LightSwitch, and that was changing, right? It went from a rich client to a web first, and yes. you got caught between those. And, and the Silverlight problem. Yeah, yeah. So the Silverlight platform issues. This has always been device, mobile, web, and Windows player is, is something that we're, we will deliver and we are going to deliver, but it's not our first order of business. So the platform is a secondary one, and the team that's building it are all the DevOps guys from Visual Studio. So Frank Wanigal, um came from the Application Insights team. Right. Darshan Desai came from the Application Insights team. Uh, Manas Maheshwari, my good buddy, came from the Load Test team. Um, Sune Vasai actually came from the Azure Active Directory team. Um, these are the guys that did DevOps and said, wow, pushing bits to servers is hard and it doesn't need to be the model. So we actually have a pull model now. You're gonna have to go to App Source and say, I want that app. And every time you run it, it's gonna pull down the right bits. The whole thing pushing to a server, right. I'll let SSW do that for a living, but hopefully we can put you out of business and make it so it's not needed. Awesome. So what is gonna be the dev test productions? What is it today and what is it gonna be? Okay. Because that's, uh, what do you do? Make second copies, you know? So you, be, you played with it from the preview and we didn't have environments. So the environment metaphor was actually added right at release. I don't know if you've gone back and taken a look at it. And just like we're using workspaces in Power BI, you'll be able to use environments in Power Apps, where I'm gonna have a dev um, environment, and we're gonna give you tooling that says, I want you to clone that right out into the prod and take that across. So um, that doesn't exist. That admin tooling doesn't exist, but the environment metaphor does. So if you look at my instance, I'm actually running a, um, a session here, I'm probably late, but that's okay, they won't start without me, um, where you can go out and start up a new environment and say, this is for Germany or this is for dev, and then say, now I'm gonna take it to the US, I'm gonna give them a different access or data, different data sets. Okay. Okay. Uh, last questions. Um, is it, uh, so, f you know, we had logic apps, yeah. and we have Flow, which is a nice, very simple UI. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, is it a fair question to ask, why did, you know, Microsoft's a rich company, why didn't you just buy if this, then that? I-F-T-T-T. -T -T. Yeah, so I think we had an enterprise scale solution of going out and doing workflows. Uh, we had the connectors, we had the investment, all the billing, and again, an enterprise scale. Um, so we could have gone out and bought another one and wired it back into our cloud offering, or, gone out and took an enterprise um, offering and actually made a much simpler to use business offering. And we decided to go with the latter. I am sure somebody like my friend Sam Guckenheimer weighed both of them, costed them out, and it was probably a better customer experience and cheaper for us to go ahead and build a business tier layer or a business designer on top of Logic Apps. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I love playing with it. It was, it was kind of like the old WPF, you would drag things around and things would just light up. Yes. Yeah, no, it's fun it's to an, play with. Yeah, it's a nice experience. Um, and what is going to be the dev test production cycle for developing Flow? Oh, it's the same. So it was, your Flows right. actually live environments. Yep. Um, yeah, it, it, they're one and the same. Okay. They're, they're married as far as their backends. And you're going to give us um, rich analytics so we know which Flows are being used, which ones aren't. That's one's the, giving errors. That's right. Again, the team came from Application Insights. Right, so we if will there's, get it. If there's anything the team knows about, it's actually collecting telemetry to let you know what flows are being used, by who, how active, uh, where are they going wrong. Those are actually going to be data packs that you're going to be seeing soon. Okay, awesome. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, thank you, Charles Sterling. And this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.